going to start mixing together this uh, refractory uh, cement and I'll show you what I have here. This is my uh, silica sand. Uh, it's also called industrial quartz apparently. Find out when I open it. Um, it says silica on it though. And then I have bentonite clay also known as sodium bentonite uh, wool clay. It's feed grade. Why is it feed grade? I bought it at a feed mill. That's the only place I could find the fire clay, in this case uh, bentonite clay. So hopefully that works out. I also have miracle Grow brand perlite and um, Riverstone also known as P-Stone just actually that's more of a filler you don't really have to add that but I'm gonna save me a little money uh... yeah and then uh... your cement that's down in there too. Cement and lye. I'll take video of that once I get it out. Okay, here's your Portland cement. And this is hydrated lime. Mason's hydrated lime. Just lime, hydrated lime. What that does is when uh, when you're dealing with high heats, the cement gets burnt up and stops holding so you need the lime to uh, hold the your material together after the cement has burnt up you want to use like half cement half lime from what I've read the cement gets it going at the start sets it up hard gets the water out quick and then the lime uh, keeps it strong as temperature affects it, burns up the cement. So I'm going to mix this all up and uh, put it in a five gallon bucket and then add water to it, probably in the house. Depending on how dusty it is, I might just add the water outside and mix it, but I figure I'll mix up all the dry ingredients in the bucket first and then mix it together in the bucket. I have a cement mixer. Um, I don't want to use it for this because from what I've read this stuff is really sticky and you're supposed to have it on the sticky side not the wet side so I don't want to have the hassle of cleaning out my cement mixer and right now it's about 30 degrees outside so I'm not going to do the cementing out here I got my form, I'm going to bring it in the house, hopefully that will work out. Alright, I want to show you, here it is, dry mixed, it's mixed up with the lid on the bucket, that's what it looks like. I've got six quarts of water, I'm going to add, see what my consistency is, I think I used five or six in the last batch, so we'll try six and see what happens. Alright, I just got done mixing this. And I think I used, what size, about five, maybe five quarts of water for about, it's about a half bucket of mix, using a large spaghetti can to get my parts. Anyhow, that's basically what it should look like. Here's my form I did. Just a uh, plywood bottom 2x4 and some uh, eighth inch chip to make it high enough. Just use some scrap I had sitting around. As you can see I marked out my pipe locations on the bottom. And I have screws to hold my pipes up so that I'm getting insulation underneath. In this case cement. Uh, Here's my uh, my pipe. 
So, this side is going to be the feed tube. You have your bird chamber in the middle. I have this taped together because I barely have them together because I needed to widen out the, the holes. Otherwise my barrel, 30 gallon barrel, would be actually over my feed. So, crinkle side up. This is important so that when I have my, uh, I forget what it's called, the tower part on, this will be outside of the cement like that much. So then my insulated uh, riser will just set on here and it can be taken off or put on. Hopefully that will work alright. All can always put a little sealant, um, high temperature sealant there. But anyhow, so the screws in there are just to keep it off the bottom. Uh, hopefully don't have to use too much cement. This stuff is not the easiest to mix in a barrel. I'll tell you that right now, I'm kind of second guessing the not using the mixer. Anyhow, I'm going to start putting it in. Okay, I just wanted to show you, I tried to dump the barrel and a lot of it came out. It's a good four inches still in there. But I wanted to show you the correct consistency. This is what you want. You see how I dumped it? It ain't puddling or anything. It's kind of keeping its form. That's what you want for your water content. That's a good mix right there. You could go waterier or, or a little bit drier, but either way it just it goes faster or slower. And this is about what you want, so if you can get that, that's, that's what you want. Okay, here's after two half buckets. Um, I leveled it out. I pushed the pipe in, kind of placed it how it's going to sit. beat. <laughs> it is hard to mix that stuff in the buckets. Uh, looks like I need about two more half buckets or so. Maybe more, maybe less. These next ones I'm going to do with a cement mixer. And I'll just carry water out there to wash it out. It, it's way too much work in the buckets. Stuff just doesn't, it's really hard to mix. Maybe if you had a mixing thing. I don't know, it's just really thick, so I'm going to use the mixer and see what happens. Alright, I wanted to show you where I'm at. I got the main unit done there. Cement mixer helped a lot. You had to shovel it all out when dumped because it's so sticky. But that's okay, it was still a big help. So I got that done. Hopefully it's level. The stuff is so sticky, I could not just use a board to really screed it. I had to use my trowel to smooth it out. So I was kind of eyeballing level, you know, using the edges and, and just go, going by feel. It doesn't have to be perfect because when I put the barrel on, I could use high heat, uh, caulk to seal the, any gaps, you know, um, I want to show you something kind of cool, I don't know if you'll be able to see this, but if you look down in there, there's water coming out of, from coming out of the cement, it's going into the, through the, the joints and the unions there and going inside. I put a paper towel in there, there was a lot more water. Um, I think I'll just leave it, because the slower it sets, probably the better. Um, so yeah, as you can see, the crinkle end is up a little ways. So the barrel, or the heat riser, should just sit on there. Um, I put a garbage bag in the can, then put the uh, six inch pipe inside the eight inch pipe and uh, packed it full of basically the same mix. I was going to take out the rocks 
for this mix, but I ended up needing more, so I just made a big batch. My last batch, it didn't use quite as much rock. Uh, don't know the exact amounts, because I was uh, messing about. Anyhow, it's, it's pretty similar to the other stuff. I think it just has a little bit less rock in it. And maybe a little bit more uh, vermiculite or whatever you call it. You can kind of see them in there. A little white. It's the vermiculite or however you say that. And uh, hopefully I got that packed pretty good. Uh, it's really hard to pack that and tell that it's spilled. Um, I'd almost say going up to like a a six inch with a ten inch pipe, or if you could get a nine inch pipe or something, it'd be a lot easier. Cause really you don't have a lot of room. That's like an inch around, you know, to pack. So it's pretty hard, but I think I did it okay. Anyhow, we'll see when we actually try this thing out, but. For now, it's probably going to cure at least a day or two. Yeah, well, that's about it. I'm worn out. Time to eat pizza. Bye-bye. <laughs> Just wanted to show you guys this. This is about three, four hours after I got finished with the concrete. As you can see, the form has moved away from the concrete. Concrete might have shrunk a little bit too, but I think it's just the forms it looks like have moved away. Not sure exactly why, but the concrete has kept its shape. So, I don't think it's anything to worry about. I maybe should have supported the forms up higher better. But like I say, it doesn't look like it's anything to worry about. I think it's okay. We will see. You can see there. Oh. See how it's dried out there? It's turned a white. I think that's from that silica sand. It's really a white color sand. Um, better get out of here, the cat wants to come and I don't need footprints. <laughs> so, yeah, just want to show you that. Okay guys, I got my 30 gallon barrel here and I'm going to have my exhaust right off the bottom of the barrel instead of as part of the stove. Um, <clears throat> the reason why is it's just more compact. Um, and I didn't want to pour that much cement as it is. My cement was really heavy for how I did it. I should have done it in the place, but it's too cold. So, anyhow, I was going to use this Volksgang adapter, barrel adapter. Problem being, on the 30 gallon barrel, the rib is right here. So, I don't know if you can see this. I have a hell of a gap. See? What I'm going to try to do is just dent this down a little bit, flatten it. If that doesn't work, it doesn't matter. I'll just screw it on like it is. Because I'm going to high temp cock underneath here anyhow. So I'll just fill in that gap. But I thought I was just drilling a hole in the barrel and doing it that way. But this is a much neater option if I can get it to work. So I'm going to give it a try and see how it goes. I'm going to attach it first, screw it on, then I'll take the grinder on the inside of the barrel and cut a little notch, then take the sawzall and cut out the hole. You could use a drill instead of a grinder to drill a hole for your sawzall blade too, but I have the grinder sitting here and it's easy. That's what I'm going to do. So, I'll show you after, after we're done. Alright ladies and men. Mainly men, I suppose. Here we go with the, the rocket stove. We got it outside now. As you can see, the form came apart. 
a little bit, which is fine. It'll be easier to take off later. I don't know if you can see, try to zoom in on this, this one corner here broke out. There was one stone right here in the corner. This stuff is actually, it's hard here, but it's brittle. I can break the corners. Um, and I kind of read that that's how it is, so I'm not too concerned. I'm not that happy with it, but I'm not that concerned either, so... We'll see. Um, I'm going to put this together now. Uh... Did have a few issues with the um, stack. As you can see, not perfect. I got a big void there right at the beginning and a few other ones. Since we're going to cock this down anyhow with high 2000 degree high head heat high temp cock. I'm just going to fill that in with cock. And hopefully that'll take care of it. It seems like the rest of it's pretty good. I should have flipped it upside down and done from the other end. Probably wouldn't have had the problem. But I think the next one I'll do, I gotta read a little, but I would try just cementing the end shut like the first inch or so and then pouring the vermiculite in there so it's just solid vermiculite and then cementing the other end shut I think that would work just as well and be a lot easier but I'll have to read and see if anybody's done it and see if anybody has anything to say about that no, I'll grab the cock and I'll cock this up and put it together and I got the barrel just about ready too, so I'll throw that on there. I just have it on this little cart because I'm going to wheel it out and try it out here in the driveway before I use it inside. So I just uh, glued the adapter onto the barrel. Uh, I would have showed you, but I'm in kind of a hurry. This stuff actually sets up really fast. It's furnace cement. It takes like an hour, and then you can use it. Use the stove says to start at low heat, but I mean, that's quick. Um, all I did is, uh, I had already cut out my hole. I used four screws to hold it down, took them out, took the adapter off, and cocked around the hole, put it back on, and then put all my screws in, which squeezed the cock out, so it's got a nice good seal. So I'm going to do this now. This is black. I think it, co it comes in several colors. That void is already filled. It wasn't that bad, but who knows, there might be others. So all I'm going to do now is just get a good bead around here. All the extra ain't good matters. Just squeeze out or in. Might as well use it up. That's about it. I'm going to put this on. Which is going to be the fun part. The wood was to the back when I did it before. Really fun. Now that I got this, I can't grab it there. So, look down it to get your center. Looks like it squeezed out pretty good just about everywhere. 
And you gotta remember it's 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 going on to that uh, other piece of pipe too, so that's gonna do it. But I'm gonna just should clean this off before I do that. This is just creating a gas tank of matter. A couple spots where I didn't squeeze out, I'm just gonna shoot a little bit extra. Ain't gonna hurt. Can only help it. Might as well use the stuff up. You got it open. Probably won't be good the next time. Just use it up. By the way, this is a really nice cock gun. I got this from Menards. It's got a nice finger. It doesn't hurt your hand when you're using it. I really like it. And it's got a quick release here. So you can, uh, oh, and the end swivels. It's a little bit more, maybe $7 or something, but it's a nice cock gun. I like it. So that's on there. Oh. You know what? I fucked up. I was going to use the extra cock to do the barrel. So hopefully I have another thing of cock. Oh well. <laughs> Shit happens, right? I'll go get the barrel now. Alright, it's been almost an hour. I had to go do some stuff. and So, here's what it looks like now the cock. I suppose I didn't show you before when I was doing it. I think I had the thing set too high. Anyhow, it's cocked and now it's still kind of pliable but it should be pretty set. I'm going to put the barrel on now and cock that and wait another hour before I do a small fire so it should be good and set. Since we do have our chimney exit on the back, we can very easily figure out our center better before caulking. See this or not? See? Um. So I'm gonna center that, and then I'll cock it. I'm just gonna basically eyeball this. Right around there, I'd say. I'm hoping this cock's going to act somewhat like a glue as well to keep this in place while I'm moving it around. As you can see, I really don't have much room. I made this form just for this barrel 30 gallon barrel that's that's about it I mean enough room to cock it and 
and that's it. I'm going to have some kind of a feed tube here. I might just put another piece of pipe or a small oil barrel or something, but I'm probably going to go just with a piece of pipe. I could even get a pipe cap for it. It's simple. So that should work pretty slick. As you can see, my barrel's not perfect either. Let's zoom out here. I've got some dents. But uh, it's good steel still, so I'm going to sand it and paint it. Oh, I forgot to mention a couple other um, issues with using this uh, Volksgang. Uh, Adapter. This is from one of those barrel stove kits, by the way. I don't know if I mentioned that before. But, uh, thing is, it's made for. I don't know if there's another adapter for it or what, but, uh, the stove pipe has to go on the wrong way. It has to go on this way. The crimp side should always go into your stove first. And on this, I can't, so I'm gonna have to. Jerry rig something after this elbow. Uh, I could maybe force the crimped in if I made a little cut out of it or something, but I'm not going to worry about it right now. I'll deal with that later. For right now, I'm just going to use it like this. I'm not going to put another piece on either because I can't really attach this piece good. It's just loose here. But for just a test burn, this will be okay probably. Or I'll just set another, I might just set another piece on here. Anyhow. Oh, and there was a damper. And you couldn't take it out without, I had to grind it off to be able to pull it out. And it left two holes. So I just filled those up with the high heat uh, caulk two one there and one on the other side. So that's that. Um... Next video will be a test burn.